Hi everybody, Karen here from tapascolor.co.uk and this is the card that I've been making today. Uh, a very quick and simple little card to make, just a couple of die cuts, but I want to draw your attention to this card in the background here. Uh, it is very, very pretty and uh, I've made it using something called the faux mother of pearl technique and I saw a video by uh, a lady named Lol Thompson and uh, I just thought that this was so super pretty, so uh, I've given it a try myself. Stay with me, show you how I did it. Base of my card is basic black, and I've cut a piece that is 8 inches by 4 inches, and I've scored and folded it at 4 inches. I have a couple of little scraps that I'm going to cut the snowflakes from. Uh, this one is the white velvet paper. Uh, now this is only going to be on sale until the end of November, so if you want some of this you need to move quick. And I know it doesn't show up terribly well on the video, but trust me it is it is lovely. It's got a lovely flocked surface. This does show up well on video though. This is a little bit of uh, the Dazzling Diamonds glimmer paper. Uh, this started off as a piece of glossy white card and uh, I've treated it uh, with the, what are we calling this, the um, mother of pearl technique, that's the one, and I'm going to show you in a minute how I did that. I have my clear faceted gems for a bit of bling. For stamping I have Merry Christmas to All, Silver Embossing Powder and Versamark Ink. And I'm going to be using some of the Snowfall Thinlets. Again, these are only available in November 2018. So if you want them, you know what to do. Don't hang around. And I've got a two and a quarter inch circle punch. This is the glossy white cardstock. And this piece is about six by four. I've also got my uh, frost white all purpose ink. I'm going to give that a jolly good shake to mix it all up and then I'm just going to put just a spot of it under my plate here and that will be plenty like that because I don't like mucky jars this is a bit of cling film cling wrap um, don't know what they call it where you are we tend to call it just cling film um, I think it's called saran wrap in some places and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrunch it up quite loosely and now I'm going to dab it into the frost white ink and just dab it about a bit and now I'm just going to dab that randomly all over the frost white Sorry, not the frost white, the glossy white card, because this is frost white, this is glossy white. So I'm just making sure I get a good coverage, but I don't want to completely obliterate the background. So let me have a look. And uh, I think that's done. We used to do this kind of thing on the walls back in the day. So it's, uh, you know, this kind of look was very fashionable. About 20 years ago? Show me age now. Okay, I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry properly and then once it is we can move on to the next step. This is now dry. It only took uh, a few minutes because you're applying a very thin layer of paint and actually I don't know how well you can see it on the camera but in the flesh it's absolutely gorgeous just like that. You could just leave it, um, you could just leave it and it would be absolutely glorious but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to put on um, a bit more colour to it so I've got, uh, this is mint macaron I'll have a dab of that and I'll have a dab of balmy blue as well a little bit of pool party and the reason why I'm pressing these down onto my craft mat uh, is so that if I get carried away which I want to do uh, I won't dip my brush into the wrong ink pad and contaminate my colors so I'm going to start off with a little bit of the pool party and I'm just picking it up on my my makeup brush here and uh, I got these very inexpensively from Amazon And 
and uh, yeah, I saw these being used on YouTube and I thought you know what I'm going to got some of those in my makeup bag which I never use for makeup because I couldn't get on with them um, I thought right okay I'll give them a go for my coffee and I really really like them they're super super soft pick up lots of ink the only slight drawback is that they're so good at picking up color that uh, they do take a little bit of a little bit of a while to wash so if you want to change color you probably need to uh, you probably need to have a, a couple of different brushes handy but I'm staying within this same color palette so I'm not uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm not bothering to change my brush and when I finished I will give them all a little bit of a wash in, uh, in some warm water with a little bit of baby shampoo over to the big shot and I've cut this snowflake out of the white velvet paper and I've cut this snowflake out of the uh, out of the dazzling diamonds glimmer paper and I'm going to punch a two and a quarter inch circle out of my piece of mother of pearl card and I'm uh, choosing where I'm punching carefully because uh, I've got quite a lot of card left there that I can use for other projects Okay, so let's start building up my snowflake with a little bit of liquid adhesive. Just clearing the nozzle. And I'm just going to put tiny little spots. Uh, at these points here and there, around the, around the middle of the snowflake as well. And that is going to go on to my circle just like that. And I'm not worrying too much that the glue has kind of spread out because it will dry clear and nobody will know it was there and in any case we're going to put this snowflake on top of it. So again just little spots where there's enough um, there's enough space. Now uh, I did think about using my uh, extra fine glue bottle but I find the, the, the glue in that is a little bit runny for this kind of work and it kind of goes everywhere for me and uh, I'm not a particularly tidy crafter you might have noticed that and I just tend to wind up in a in a bit of a mess okay Right now I want to put a gem in the middle of my snowflakes just to give it a little bit more bling but I'm trying to decide whether or not to do a, a clear one or whether to colour it which is why I've got this is light shaded spruce from my blend so I'm just going to colour one of my gems in light shaded spruce and it's very pretty and because these are alcohol markers it will dry it will dry quickly and it won't come off so I've got that one and this is dark mint macaron and after I've said that it won't come off um, actually if I go over it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol afterwards it kind of will so if I decide afterwards uh, I need a clear gem, not a green one, then that's okay, I can have one. So I'm trying to decide now which of those two colours I like better. And I think it's the I think it's the mint macaron. So I'm just gonna pick that up on my uh, on my pick-me-up tool and then I'm gonna drop it again. Which I didn't mean to do. 
Now I know those are self adhesive but I'm still going to put a little bit of my liquid glue there just to help matters along. I'm just going to centre that and that's another thing that putting the, uh, the liquid adhesive does the liquid adhesive underneath does I should have said uh, and that is it because it gives it a little bit of little bit of wiggle room so that's rather pretty and I'm just going to curl up these edges of this snowflake just to give them a little bit more prominence and again this is totally optional you don't have to do this at all it's just something that I just thought I would do and of course if you put it in an envelope you're probably going to flatten them down so you know <laughs> it'll look good for about five minutes yeah that is my whoops that's my embellishment for my card so let me bring back my card base and decide uh, I was thinking about popping it up on some dimensionals, but you know what? I think it's going to look better if it's flat. And would it look better again if I had another circle around it? Mm. Decisions, decisions. Think, think, think. Nope. I'm just going to keep this simple. Now the two and a quarter inch circle punch is the largest one that Stamping Up currently make. We did used to have a two and a half inch circle punch and I still have mine. Oops, I've just got a, I've just got a message on my phone. Um, but we retired it a couple of years ago and uh, so I'm not going to tease you with it. But if I wanted a larger circle, um, I could cut one with my Big Shot and my layering circles but I haven't got those out at the moment so uh, I'm not going to tease you with them and that is my finished card and I'm very pleased with it. I'm using this Merry Christmas to All stamp set because we have got an awful lot of options, choices to make the message that we want to make because we can make Merry Christmas, we can make Christmas Blessings uh, we could have holiday cheer, happy holiday, uh, we could have wishing you a Merry Christmas. You have, by combining the various stamps in this set, you can make pretty much any message that you want to. And the one that I've chosen is, um, it's a little bit unusual for a Christmas card, but I'm going to go with Bright Blessings. Okay, and I'm just choosing, I'm kind of eyeballing where I want those to be on my basic black card and I'm going to use my craft ruler to help me keep things straight so I've pushed that up against the edge of my stamparatus and I'm just going to push my stamps right up against it and kind of eyeballing that it's the right distance it's about the right distance from either side which it is and again the ruler is helping me there so I'm just going to pick up those stamps onto the plate of the Stamparatus and okay the ruler wants to come with them but that doesn't matter right so we've finished with that so now I'm just giving the basic black card dusting with my embossing buddy and I'm being generous with it because I can brush away any that I don't need afterwards Versamark ink and by putting the stamp case underneath the edge of the Stamparatus there it means that I've got a nice firm surface to stamp on which is jolly good. Okay, so light tapping with the Versamark, bring in the plates of the Stamparatus and press down. Now because these are photopolymer stamps I've got my sponge mat on the base of the Stamparatus and I'm pressing down firmly and giving the ink time to transfer into my card. So let me move that away and let me just check 
don't want to move it from the the base and that is fine I'm happy with that so a little spot of silver embossing ink just over the top okay and I've got a little bit of spillage here so I'm just going to take just a few seconds just to brush away the ink that I don't want. Give it a little blow. Okay, and I seem to have lost a bit of the G there, never mind. A bit more powder. Okay. Alright, so put my put my embossing powder back in the pot before I do something dreadful to it. And the next step is going to be to heat emboss this card. So I'm just going to warm up my heat gun. I'm going to put it on to high speed. And then I'm going to uh, uh, heat emboss my sentiment. So there it is, there is my finished card and uh, it's actually a lot prettier in real life than the camera is showing so uh, yeah I do apologise for that so I just hope that I can take a photograph of it that does the card justice. So thank you for staying with me to the end of the video, uh, I'm really pleased to have had your company, uh, would love it if you came back and saw me again sometime because I will be posting more videos very soon but for now thanks for joining me and I'll see you again sometime soon. Bye-bye.